So I told you the top, we were only going to do college football with McShay because everything that happened this past weekend, I will know uh, the past week is Indiana week. At least my personal history, it will be Indiana week. Uh, and then we have the Indiana result. And then what we a have wild the Saturday, SEC. though. Yeah, it really was. And I mean, the Indiana result, I don't think was all that wild, but the SEC stuff. And so it led to just the cycle of all of it all and over And Big again. 12, too. Yeah, I mean, when I had tweeted out, like, the committee's running out of teams, FCS Skip Bayless chimes in immediately and starts just, like, making it about the SEC again. And I was like, well, no, I mean, you know, the Colorado loss, to see them get manhandled on the ground, because yeah. if you look at, like, where Colorado's flawed, they're actually pretty good against the run. And then Devin Neal just beasts them for a day. But Kansas becomes the first team ever to have a losing record to beat three ranked teams. But, you know, Kansas was supposed to be good and they've sneaky been in all of it with just a bad record. So yep. I don't even think it's necessarily a bad loss for Colorado. However, with this massive, I think nine teams are still alive in the Big 12 we're going to have to start changing the way we look at some of those bottom teams. And that will uh, lead to some conversation right now. All right. So, I'm going to do the top 12. You're going to do it with me. This will be okay. my list. So Oregon, Ohio State, Texas, we're fine with, right? Yep. yep. There's no other option. Agreed. Although, yes, there could be a Texas conversation. But I would say if you're just looking at the schedule with them, when you watch them they play. They have not played great, but, but I believe that they have the talent. They have not played great. See, I feel like when I watch them, I go, I'd still believe in them. That's what I'm saying. I, I believe, and, and I think when they get into a, a huge matchup, they're going to open things up offensively. I think that there's more there. But um, it'll be interesting. I mean, we'll, whatever. I'm, I'm sidetracking us, but it will be interesting no, okay. to see uh, Quinn Ewers coming off that ankle injury. They clearly, it was his final home game at DKR. They wanted him to, you know, to be in there in the second half, but he, he clearly was limited. They ran the ball vast majority of the second half, and you know, it they, they, it, it was just about survive and advance, but, but this offense has not looked the same since, since the, um, the injury that he suffered earlier in the year. So it'll be interesting if, if they can turn it on. That would be my big question. Can they turn it on offensively when, when the, you know, all chips are in the middle of the table? Yeah, I guess you could argue it's it's two games, but I felt like they were more in control of this one than they were Arkansas, where Arkansas was a defensive thing. But at least you have the Florida result a couple of weeks ago to I go agree. off of a when they can open this up. So my point would be when I watch Texas, I don't go, ooh, I think that they are bad. So therefore, like, because then you can start to do an exercise where it's like, well, if you're only going to look at the opposing schedule and never watch a football team play, then that must be really efficient and a lot easier to do. So I have Texas third. You're fine with it. Yep. Who would you put fourth? Georgia. We have that as the same. Really? Give me the Georgia case. Yeah. Um, I know who Georgia is. They're not the elite that we've seen out of them in, in some previous years. I think their defense, you could stack up there. I'm not saying they're as good as some of the other elite defenses in the country uh, i think you know i i would bet on texas's defense over, over georgia's at this point but uh, and i've seen carson beck transition i even saw it in the loss to Ole miss and i, and I said that i, I think he it's like the weight of the world was on his shoulders he was pressing on every down he was trying to force things and, and i've seen him kind of and, and he, even the report in the game about he went back and studied self-scouted and like you saw the difference against Tennessee. I just I think they scare me and and they and they they scare me because they are battle tested and they haven't you know it was one half against Alabama they look good one half they look terrible um, they have not been as consistent as you would expect from a Kirby Smart team but I know the talents there I know the coaching's there and with Penn State like I know everyone's sitting there well why not Penn State. Uh, be, the talent level is different for starters, but if we're not just going off of that, Penn State has not had a tough road. Penn State could have lost that game and, and probably should have lost that game by two to three touchdowns against Ohio State. And then I'm watching, you know, I'm, I'm watching Ohio State dismantle an undefeated Indiana team. And, and then I, I turn on the very next window of college football and, and it's a slugfest. And I get it. Like, 
Alabama was a slug. Should, you know, Alabama had that struggle game against Oklahoma and lost by three touchdowns. Penn State had a struggle game against Minnesota, a similar record coming into the game. I think Minnesota was six and four, and and um and Oklahoma was five and five. But but and they found a way to win, and that was good. And it, it took onions from James Franklin, fake punt, and all those sorts of things. But they're struggling with Minnesota at the end of the day. There's not like a clear difference. They're not dominant. They don't have weapons on the outside. And you could say the thing, same thing for Georgia, but even their weapons who haven't been great, there's more talent, there's more speed, there's more explosiveness. So I just see a clear difference between the two teams. And it, it's not, you know, the win loss record and all that. But if you're playing week in and week out against that competition, and I don't care, like Danny Cannell, your boy, and everybody else who the anti SEC, I, I, that's fine. But anyone who's reasonable and doesn't have a, a, a horse in the race, everyone I've talked to across the country who like evaluates talent for the like the SEC is the best, and week in and week out, it is a grind. And so to see what they've done, and it has not been perfect in their blemishes, but Georgia is just so much more battle tested than Penn State at this point. Um. All right, let's hold off on some of the SEC stuff because I think it comes back into play, though, more no, I agree. For, for Ole Miss, Bama, and AM and all three teams losing in the way they did and trying to sift through that and figure out, like, is there a landing spot for a three-loss team here still in the 12-team playoff? Do they get one of those last spots there? And it leads right. to the Indiana conversation. But I like it. That was a nice little appetizer on what we're going to yeah, do. Yeah, that would be my um, longest rant of the day, I promise. <laughs> five is five is interesting. I'm I'm really intrigued. I'm, I'm I, I wrote mine down, so it, it's I'm not going to mine first. Or yeah, mine? Give, give me yours first here because I have my five here, and I don't think people are going to agree with it. The fighting Tommy Reese's of South Bend. I put Notre Dame five. Mm. You have Tennessee five, don't you? I do. <laughs> hey, by the way, I don't know what to do. I don't, I, you know, I felt good about three. And then I was like, let's see what happens here. Look, I had Bama up because I go, if I want to do, here's what I started doing. Yep. Is I started looking at like your three best wins in this group. And Notre Dame does not hang with Georgia. Um, they don't hang with Tennessee, I don't think. I mean, Tennessee's, you know what? Let's do it this way. Let's do your three best opponents. Just, we don't even have to have win. All right. Your three best opponents. Georgia, it's Texas, yep. Bama, and Clemson. Texas, Bama, and Tennessee. Like you could, you could flip one of those if you wanted to. If you think that Tennessee, it's, well, Tennessee, it's Texas, better than yeah, Clemson. Texas, Bama, Tennessee, Bama and, and then, Tennessee. And then right. Clemson is a is like right. you know sprinkle on top. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It is Tennessee over Clemson. Um, you don't even have to win, right? So it's just opponents. Three best opponents for Penn State so far. Ohio State, Illinois, and and West Virginia. Is it West Virginia or Minnesota? I think Minnesota's like Minnesota's not terrible. They're all right. Tennessee's three best opponents, Georgia, Bama, Florida. You know, the Florida one's a little tricky there because um, Mertz gets knocked out of that game, but clearly Florida's actually like better with Lagway. So, you know, what does that mean? Their loss is worse. If you're looking at Notre Dame, who, yeah, who's Notre Dame? Out there. <laughs> well, it's A and M, obviously. Um, I think Louisville's clearly in that, and then Navy and Army were ranked. Yeah. So <clears throat> is it is it actually Army? Because I think most of us all thought Army was better than Navy. Uh, is it USC this week? I feel like it I'm talking be- you into my argument without having to talk a whole lot here. Yeah, no, I know. I, I but this is this leads to the I don't know what else to do. The AP has Penn State four. All right, they do not see it the same way we see it with the Georgia thing. The, the AP is lazy. Well, yeah, but I think the committee has actually hey, been hey. more. The committee really likes Big Ten. They do football. Uh, I think the committee's treating it more like standings than they. I'll are be surprised when 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 it comes the rankings come out if Penn State isn't four. I I'd be shocked if they weren't four because look. Minnesota, you say whatever you want compared to the other SEC stuff. Again, I think that they're a tougher out, and I, think I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Yeah. They're they're a good. They've gotten a lot better. It's a home they're game. Good. It's their Super Bowl. I like Bowl. the quarterback. Yeah, I know he's kind of all over the place, but I like Max. 
Uh, all right, so I have I have Notre Dame five just because of the ass kicking stuff, the worst loss than Penn State's Ohio State thing. I totally get it. I understand why people would be on my case about it. That's fine. I have Tennessee seven. I could flip Tennessee with Notre Dame or Penn State. I wouldn't get mad about it. Then I think it's the next group of I have Miami, I have SMU. I don't love Boise State, but their loss is against the number one team in the country. So even though I think we all have fallen in love with Tulane here, it's it's tough to do. You're not going to get Tulane all the way up here. Um, so now it's eleven and twelve. Well, okay. Right. Can we go back and tear this? Can we tear this thing yeah, a little tear bit? It okay. out. And yeah. I don't know if you want to make it two tiers at the top or or just one. But the first tier absolutely includes Oregon, Ohio State, and Texas. I would just, for the sake of this, throw Georgia in there too. To me. Uh, I'm fine with that, although I tried to, well, I, I wasn't putting Bama in that tier necessarily, but I just, I wanted to hammer the teams that haven't played anybody because I think that's what a committee is supposed to do. And I think the AP should be doing it, but the AP doesn't want to do it. All right. So, and the committee hasn't wanted to either. So, whether or not you have Georgia at the bottom of tier one or at the top of tier two, we'll say top of tier two for the sake, it's Georgia for. And then it, however you want to rank them, but tier two includes Georgia, if they're in there, if they're not tier one, Tennessee, Penn State, Notre Dame. Would we agree? And it doesn't Penn have to State. be in that order. You, you had Notre Dame five, I had Tennessee, but it's Tennessee, Penn State, Notre Dame in some order, right? Totally agree. Yeah, because okay. then, then it opens up from Miami. Well, they'll, the coaches have Miami ahead of Tennessee, seven to eight. I I mean, would disagree with that. Um, but so our, that our top group. two tiers cover the first seven teams. It's Oregon, Ohio State, Texas, Georgia, and then whatever order, Tennessee, Penn State, Notre Dame. So we're through yes. seven teams. That's two tiers. Now we get yep. into tier three. And who the teams for me in tier three, and you kind of have a different order. But I'm going to, I think Miami belongs in tier three. I think SMU belongs in tier three. Where we at okay. Boise State, you throw into tier three at some point. Where I think we're going to differ is also in tier three for me are South Carolina and Clemson. But I'm not sold on Clemson, but I would have them in my top 12 right right now. Knowing that one of those two teams is going to lose. I mean, it's it, it's a battle on Saturday in, in Clemson, South Carolina for to see who's going to stay in there for, for my rankings. All right. So... <laughs> We, I have Boise 10. I don't love it. I have SMU 9. I actually feel a little bit better about that. Um, when I watch SMU play, I'm like, I actually just kind of think they're good. But this last stretch of schedule stuff, you know, back when people thought Pitt was, was decent, like they've fallen apart. Sneaky Boston College, we both realized they show up to fight. They don't mm -hmm. win a lot of them. Uh, although they're six and five this year, so I yeah. just conference they're below 500, but there's not a lot to like here with the SMU stuff, but I, I think it is a little mini Texas for me and that when I watch them, I'm like, you know what? I, I think they're good and their loss is somewhat excusable, even though at the time, I think they were like 13 point favorites against BYU. People didn't realize that BYU is going to be really good. So now that leads to kind of like 11 and 12. And I think everybody listening to this pod is expecting me to find a way to put Bama back in or excuse away Ole Miss or keep the A&M hope alive here. And I'm telling you right now, I can't do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was convinced after the Indiana Ohio State game, everything kind of played out. I thought it was even worse than I thought it would be. Um, I certainly didn't think Indiana was going to win the football. The score game. might not have been worse, but after the first series and after the first 10 minutes of that game, the, the lopsided nature of it was worse than I even expected. Do you want to get in? All right. Do, would you have Indiana in your top 12? Let's I would not. I it. would not. What do you have them like thirteen in the? Uh, I have them fourteen behind Alabama, and I don't. I, yeah, I have them fourteen behind Alabama, <laughs> and I don't love like I, I don't know what to do with Alabama right now. I'm totally fine being done with Alabama. I tried to give them another Rosillo push last week, um, and I I'm done with it. Milrow is not good. The fact that you guys. Like, I can't wait until you do the full evaluation. Make sure you have the draft clip of him on an offsides free play, throwing it out of bounds. Okay? I love that text from you the other night. Right. 
like, <laughs> hey, do you see this free play? Yeah, let's throw it five yards deep at the sideline. Um, and it wasn't all on him. The tackles were a mess. But Oklahoma, to review here, and this is why I'm totally fine with, like, I, I'm not – I can't schedule up Bama. I can't be like, hey, you guys aren't <laughs> – you guys don't get it. I don't think that Norman on a Saturday night necessarily is easy. But to really put in perspective who Oklahoma has been on offense, yards per play, I think they're 131 out of 134 teams. Like Jackson Arnold didn't really have to do anything. The running back was terrific. I thought there was a lot of like Vandy-ish film study of the eye candy at the line of scrimmage to freeze Alabama's front. It was like, oh, it it appears they're going to try to do some Vandy shit to these guys. And it froze them. And then Milrow had the disastrous game. So you factor that in with... The Vandy loss, the Tennessee loss, which is, you know, a good loss. But I don't I don't love him. You know, Saban had one three loss season in 2010, which I thought was one of his most talented football teams. And unfortunately for Kalen DeBoer, it's in his first season replacing the legend. I'm totally I like I can't schedule Bama. I can't give you the full scope of Bama and talk myself into the SEC stuff that everybody thinks that I'm going to do because I've seen enough of the bad version of it, and it all comes to a culmination. The fewest points in two decades, an Oklahoma team that cannot move the football. Turnovers are a big part of it, but they also couldn't tackle them. They couldn't stop this young running back. That's actually a bad loss, even if we know that Oklahoma was ranked during the beginning of the season. We know that it's a tough game atmosphere Saturday night in Norman it's, and the talent, all that kind of stuff. I can't do it. Well, a Saturday third night in Norman ain't them. Baton Rouge. I've been to plenty Saturday nights in, in Norman, and it ain't Baton Rouge. It ain't Tennessee. It ain't Georgia. Like it's just it. it, it and I'm it's, I'm not knocking all the folks in Norman and the Oklahoma. It, it, it it's certainly a difficult place to play, and they are passionate. And they, but it, it it's not that. More importantly, the, like, let's get to the point here. The point is, <laughs> Alabama, truly, the point is yeah. this. Alabama came to the realization after their bye week that, and they self-scouted, did a great job. Jalen Milrow did, really doesn't want anything to, to do with running, or, or, or I should better put, Jalen Milrow is not nearly the aggressive, productive runner on scrambles as he is when he's on designed runs, Right. So they came out in that uh, in the Tennessee game, and they they it was design. I think eleven of his thirteen runs were design runs. One hundred and seventy-five of the one eighty-five he had in that game rushing were designed runs, and they dominated a damn good Tennessee defense. I mean, didn't put up massive points on the board, but but they were dominant. And they you know, Milrow running on design runs was the new thing for Alabama. Wait, you're talking about LSU. I'm sorry, LSU. LSU. Sorry, LSU. LSU. Not Tennessee. Sorry, Tennessee completely shut them down. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, I'm losing my mind. There's too many games. Uh, All right. Tough schedule. They got a tough schedule. You got to keep track of it. Yeah. (laughs) After the bye week, LSU design runs, and it was the the it was ugly. It was ugly. But since then, we've come to realize that LSU is not, you know, that that was a splintered team, and we've also come to realize that like. You would think the thing that they realized that they're dominant at would would carry over. And Brent Venables is a phenomenal defensive coach. You could talk about him as a head coach and crew, like all those things. But as a defensive coach, he's phenomenal. And so if Oklahoma, that, that Oklahoma defense is really good. It really is. You match that up with the championship offense and they've, they've, they're cooking. But still to be shut down that much and then to have your offensive tackles have an absolute nightmare of a night against Oklahoma and th- those edge guys, what do they have now? Because now everyone knows, like, all right, if we can stop that, if we can stop him, if you cut off his legs as a design runner, what do we have offensively? We can't protect. We got the, we got the best, of, if not the best, of not, one of the top two freshman wide receivers in the country, phenomenal player. But Yeah, I, I mean, he had two plays that didn't count. That, that were, were <laughs> like highlights. They'd be the best single play for like 100 receivers in college football. But outside of that, and, and it doesn't matter how great he is necessarily when you can't protect a quarterback who yep. is not a, a great pocket passer. So to me, like, I think, feel like the, the stick is up for Bama. I don't have my top 12. I'm but then totally again, in a playoff it, game, right. I'm scared to death to play him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I think I still like AM and m in the oldness better than them. So the Bama buy-in thing 
the rest of the country will be happy to hear that I'm, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Okay. Right? I can't, I can't do it anymore. And I've never liked the quarterback the entire time. And by the way, the interception, his effort on the sideline, terrible yeah. towards the end of the game. I know he's upset and the whole thing, but like, that's not what I want out of my future NFL quarterback of like kind of having those moments on the sideline where it seems like he's completely shut down, like fake it better. You know, yep. I hear you. Um, so you don't have Bama 12. I do not have Bama. So let's go back to the tiers. First two tiers covered seven teams. The yep. third tier, it sounds like, while we're not agreeing on where they're all slotted, sure. we do have Miami, SMU, and Boise State somewhere in there, correct? Or no? We do. We do. Okay. So okay. my other two teams, yep. whether you want to call it fourth tier or that w- would be included in that bottom tier. Tier D. Are South Carolina and Clemson, and I don't have a ton of conviction right now, but if one of those teams goes out and has an impressive performance in a final game in a rivalry at the end of the season, I would have a hard time keeping them out. All right. Um, The three losses for South Carolina, it's funny that like they're a three loss team. And I'm not even saying that you're just doing this because I've seen it throughout the weekend in that there was like a push that maybe Clemson, South Carolina is for an at large bid. And I was like, well, I guess if you were in the committee and you go, Carolina got completely screwed against LSU by the officiating mm-hmm. and three significant calls that, that have a great deal to do with like, I don't love doing that all the time. That game, I think, is a prime example of like a couple calls go our way feeling a little bit better. Maybe it's a two loss team. And again, South Carolina is like one of my favorite teams to watch in college football. But as we go through sifting through the SEC teams, there's still two more to do here. Losing to Auburn is worse than losing to Oklahoma or Florida right now. Old Miss losing to Florida. Like, I'm sorry, Florida's pretty good. Like yep. Lagway is going to be a stud. That freshman running back boss a stud. There's, I know that they got off to the terrible part of it, and this is kind of the, the the weird scheduling stuff where it's like, oh, look at Notre Dame's game against A and M. Well, that's a really good loss. Well, I understand the record part of it, but did you like? I feel. Do we you feel and I agree? You you, you you texted me, and I, I thoroughly agreed, and was already kind of headed down that road. And I even on our podcast Saturday night, I even said it's one of the ten things that like I think I know now. Like throw out the records based off of what we've seen recently, and just like the last couple of weeks. You could make a strong argument if you were just to seed them that, that Florida is playing the fourth best ball or the fourth best team like right now. Like if you were to rank who you don't want to go to play as an opponent, I you can make an argument Florida would be fourth on that list behind Texas, Georgia, Tennessee. You really could. I <laughs> know. Uh, I it means I nothing meant for this the, conversation, no, but I'm saying no. when you're starting to look like in perspective of those losses. Yeah, like I would just ask again, if you're just looking at the record, then you don't have to watch anything. You never have to watch anything, and you can just sit there and not watch Florida the last few weeks, despite Texas handing it to them. Yep. But it's it's pretty clear. And look, Ole Miss, the two Pegues, fourth downs don't work out. They've got the kicking issues. And then Jackson Dart, who physically I like. I love his competitive edge. I love his toughness. He also scares the shit out of me. Okay? He is... He's not he been great in, in late in games, trailing like in that the Kentucky moment, games. The Kentucky stuff was was actually, I think, even worse because it was at home than even what was happening here in Florida. He has a three picks. One is called back from flag. He's like, all right, we'll do this again. So it's uh, technically the two picks there late that are a disaster. He's a mess. How many times sideline. do you get to re rack something twice after making a yeah. miserable decision? A pre snap read that he he just he committed to where he was going with the football through into triple coverage interception. Defense, they still have three timeouts. Defense stops and does does its job, gets you the ball back. You throw another interception, and then you get to re rack it because it was because the ball hit the ground a little bit on the what looked like an interception in real time. And then the third one, like of the three, was the least was least amount on him. But still, to have three interceptions in the final few minutes of that game when your team needs you. And I feel terrible for the guy. I've sat and talked to him for 45 minutes a couple of times. I really like him. I like him as a competitor. He's done amazing things at Ole Miss. He's been part of kind of bringing this, this program to a, another level. Uh, but if you're going to be in this mix, you got to have your quarterback make some big moment plays. And it just it didn't happen. 
But, then, so but, you, I, you, but I also want to say, I've talked to some people who I, who like, from a talent per- perspective and in college football in the, in the last 24 hours, to not, not talk, texting, really think Ole Miss is one of the 12 best teams still. Like, really, truly believe. If throw out the records, throw out, the, you know, it's not out. a good Kentucky loss, Florida record, all that stuff. Like, truly believe, pushing hard, like Ole Miss should still be in this thing way more so than, than Alabama. I look, if I had to, if you told me who do you like of the three teams that lost on Saturday night, Bama's last now. Like, I've, I've just seen the Milrow stuff enough that I, I can't Including trust A&M? It. I like A&M better than Alabama. Yeah, I'm not. Today. Not, today, yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree. Today I do. You know, I don't, I don't know what to make of the Texas game because I think A&M can get that game. I actually they, do. They could, right. But I actually do. They should be even more pissed off after that deal against Auburn. But you can't, like, there have been years past where I would look at Auburn's roster, and it was always funny to me, like, even when Auburn was terrible, you go, who's that guy, though? Like, what, you know, mm-hmm. there's just still littered with dudes, and you're figuring, okay, well, four of those guys are probably going to transfer after this disastrous season. Peyton Thorne was legitimately terrific in the first half of her season where he probably regrets even being there. They're up 21-0, yeah. so credit for AM to get back into it. But you cannot spin this as, like, a competitive Saturday night on the Plains, even though it's a tough place to play, when you scored seven points against Vanderbilt a couple weeks ago, okay? You... You lost four straight SEC games. They lost to Cal, who's sneaky, acceptable, if that's mm. a term. Um, <laughs> this, is, this, is not, this is not a good Auburn football. This is a no. disastrous two and five season here. So that, that loss is bad. So of the losses, it's the worst based on the opponent, yet I still would like them better than maybe even Alabama and Ole Miss. And this brings it to full. We're, we're 27 minutes into this. We haven't really dug into the Indiana part of it. Okay. I have them 12. I fucking hate it. I hate having a 12. <laughs> I was arguing against Indiana before 2024. Indiana even existed. When we first heard about conference expansion, I warned the country about what was going to happen with these schedules. When we first started projecting it out to 12, maybe even 14 teams, which was my new favorite thing. And we're like, well, you know, they really should have done 14 teams. Yes, let's bring in more of these teams that haven't done anything. I was like, this is going to happen. We're going to be inviting teams to a party for a chance to win a national championship that have done fucking nothing. Now, (laughs) winning these games is not nothing, okay? Indiana, despite how bad they looked against Ohio State in the shoe on a Saturday afternoon, I don't think that you can't, you can't be 10 and 0 and suck at football. So I'm not saying they they suck. They don't, they don't. But I have a huge problem, as I've said all last week with this part of it. Let's look at their drives, Todd. I'm hot now. I'm warmed up. It only took a half hour. So three and out against Ohio State, 11 plays, 70 yards, touchdown, three for three on third down. You're like, whoa, okay. These guys are ready to play. However, the middle possessions, let's call it the seven real middle possessions because we'll forget about the end of the game and we'll forget about the end of the first half when they got it back. Eight yards, these are the drives and the totals. Eight yards, negative seven yards, negative four yards, the half. Two yards, eight yards, 32 yards, negative 11 yards, and then the late touchdown, which I think was maybe the most damning thing from the Saturday. So Signetti, who I get it, man. It's a bit like the Lane Kiffin thing, the Deion Sanders thing. You show up to Bloomington. A lot of guys are like, who's this dude? James Madison played tough football. He brought a bunch of those guys over. Mm -hmm. you got to get people to pay attention to you. So when you show up to the rallies, you're playing to a home crowd. You start motherfucking everybody, and it's on. He went on last week with Clatt, Mark Ingram. I don't love that he made fun of Bama playing Mercer when it's like, bro, have you looked at your out-of-conference? At least Bama went up to Madison and stomped on them. But I get it. Nobody, no coach can get on any of those platforms when they're being debated as much as the Hoosiers were being debated last week and start saying, you know what, my team actually might not be that good. When Saban... Had, was was trying to get his team in, I think, in the TCU year, and he had said on the conference call, like, hey, Vegas would have his favorite against the entire field except one team. He got crushed for it. I didn't love it either. Totally understand why he had to do it because you can't go on saying, I have mean, probably five out of these teams. All right, so I don't blame Signetti for stirring the pot and all these different things. What I think was disgusting from that game is that you're getting your ass kicked. This is what you've done, and then you decide that you're going to run 703 off the clock down 31-7, run it nine times, past six times, with no urgency, because you kind of just want the score to say 31-15. 
That's what I think he was doing. And that's why I think at the end, with all oh. the talk, right, with all the talk, that's why I think they pushed it the last uh, yes. one at 38 cents. So we can do like, that we, too. If you want, if, yeah, right. Like, we can okay, do that we're not going to take a back seat to anybody. We're not going to do any of these things. Or Get you're going to run here. seven minutes off the clock, hoping that 3115 looks better. Yeah. Get your, and that's, your, your backdoor respectable game against Ohio State shit out of here. Agreed. And I have him yeah, we'll 12. Put a knee, we'll put a knee on and be respectful of it. We should be a conference team. Get out of here. That's what that <laughs> so was. Get out of here. Get so, out and of the, here. And the weirdest thing ever happened with Hoosiers fans, at least on the social media part, maybe guilty a bit of the polling of one here, so it's the last. You get your brains beat in. And then because the SEC has three losses on Saturday night, you get chesty Hoosiers fans. Give it 24 hours, okay? Yeah. Like, just give it 24 hours. I've never seen a fan it's like, base it's like they, it's be like, able to rally. It's like the boyfriend that goes and cheats. That goes and cheats on his girl. but And then she goes out that night and, and, and dances with another guy. And, and he comes storming in all pissed off. I'm pissed no. off at myself, though. I am pissed off at myself because I have him 12. But I don't love the story of those three. I, I can't I can't do it. And look, the SEC is still better. There's this odd, vague thing that happens where it's, well, it's not that someone else is better. It's that they're not as good as you guys think they are. It's a very odd thing that happens. I, it's this, this vague debate where it's like, no, it's, it's not. It's like, okay, well, who do you think is better? Well, no one's better but this. Sane people can watch all of the stuff on Saturdays. I'm sorry if you can't see the difference between Florida and Ole Miss and even shit, Penn State and Minnesota. Here's like, the thing I want to say because I've got I've got taken a lot of heat. I've taken on a lot of water from Indiana fans, and I've got a couple of good friends, and they've been texting me, and they're not even mad. They they think I'm re- they're reasonable, um, but I, I do want to say this. I studied because I, I wanted to really really understand Indiana before Ohio State, like really truly. So I studied I studied them. I think they've got three damn good college football wide receivers, okay? They catch everything. They're efficient. They leverage their routes. They're smart. Um, Rourke, when he has time to throw, can be very effective. Layers the ball, accurate, efficient, gets him out of bad plays, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. This is coming into the game, right? Their offensive line in the run game, hat on hat, like – they do a great job of, of blocking as a group and moving like as a, as a ballet almost, you know, and their running backs are good. 17's got more juice and I like 17. Okay. The JMU, I think JMU, he was a transfer in, but, and then defensively West, the defensive tackle, really good player. Kamara edge, good player. West is a stud. I mean, West is an even, absolute in the, even stud. in the game, in the where game, game dominated, yes. he shows up. Right. And, and right. they're disciplined and they, they, they do with all the, and, and okay. honest to God, one of the most well-coached, well-oiled, like as a team, I just, you watch it and you're like, God, they're frustrating. Like how, how, how are we going like, it to, it, it's going to take four quarters of discipline doing all those things. Okay. Okay. All that. So it's not like I went into this thing like, Oh, it's Indiana. Like I took the time, I really did, and, and I really like a lot of their part, a lot of parts, and a lot of the things they're doing. But I also have taken the time with all these other teams, and Indiana's not like Indiana's not these other teams we're talking about. Indiana's not South Carolina. If you don't believe me in my tape study, like FanDuel, I asked them hypothetical odds: Indiana against Clemson. Clemson would be a, a two point favorite. South Carolina would be a three point favorite. Texas A and M, I was surprised to pick them when I asked. Ole Miss would be an eight and a half point favorite over India. So like, and those guys don't get things wrong very often. Yeah. I, no, I know. I, I understand the spread part of it. I just think the talent part of it is, is, well, that's why the spread's there. I'm saying like, if you're not believing our eyes, believe people who make a lot of money did. on this stuff. Like, I don't know what else, what other, I just, I don't see it. So I I'll take the, I'll take all the heat and listen, they abs- they're probably going to be in the top 12. And the- they're going to be in the top 12. They're going to be the, in the top 12. The committee likes the Big Ten. Yep. They had four of the top. Like They had no problem having Penn State four and five when they did last week's rankings. So they're going to be back in there, and they're going to say, well, they lost on the road to number two, and you shouldn't drop out of the playoff 
when, but my point would be, as it's already been covered, I have him 12 and I don't like it. I have him 12 and I don't like it. Uh, and all this is really, really political. Nobody's changing their mind. The SEC has a night like they do on Saturday, so it opens the door back up. But what's ADN interesting is you have, them, you, have them tw- you have them 12 and you don't like it. Yeah. But if they are 12, you don't, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you have a, a big 12 team in your top 12, correct? Arizona State, 11. Because oh. Indiana fans told me that I hate Oh, so Cinderella's. then they would get in. And you, have, yeah. and you have Boise State in there. So they would get in in, in your scenario. Okay. Yeah. I don't hate Arizona uh, State there. I think they've earned it the way they've played. I, I just, if there were a three-loss SEC team, I could sit here and make an argument for where I go, hey, I'm convinced of this, which I'm certainly capable of doing in the past. When I did it Saturday night and thought about it, when I did all the prep last night, I woke up to do the show today. I was like, I cannot. Like, I don't, I'm not sitting here being like, I really wanted to sell it. <laughs> I, yeah. I wanted to sell what I believed in, and I don't believe in any of those teams at this point, but I definitely don't believe in the premise. It has nothing to do with Indiana. Okay. This is my Penn State rant from years ago is I don't, I don't like this, but the committee likes the Big Ten. Good reminder. Uh, they're treating this more like standings. They could reset this whole thing after the conference championship games. I've told myself, like when I do my final rankings, which again, don't mean anything. I don't know that I want to reward the team that misses out on the conference championship game and then bump them up over the conference championship game loser. But I'm worried that that's going to happen. It's back to the Lane Kiffin thing. But the timing of his whole argument of like not wanting to be in the SEC title game ends up is egg on his face because everybody's like, oh, now you don't have to worry about it. But it still was his point. Um, but I, I, I don't have much more other than I thought Saturday was so weird because – and it's like I'm paying attention to – and like, look, I worked with Danny for two years. I know the bit. I know the routine. It's, mm-hmm. like, it's like somebody tweeting like, hey, I thought the eggs were going to be cheaper type shit. You know, it's like really political. And I'll never quite understand – just missing you can hate the sec you can hate all these things you can love saturday night uh and i don't have any of those teams in so i think some people probably thought i was going to try to find a way to do it based on me talking up the sec but i just ran through an exercise and i didn't even know what the teams were ahead of time right yeah um these are the sixth seventh eighth and ninth place teams in the four major programs or four major conferences you ready Mm -hmm. big 12's k-state tcu texas tech west virginia ACC is Duke, Syracuse, UVA, and Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. The Big Ten is Iowa, Washington, Michigan, and Minnesota. The SEC is Alabama, LSU, Ole Miss, Hmm. Missouri. Florida's 10th. (laughs) Yeah. So um, the top of the conference is down. The conference is not going to get the five teams in that it wanted to. I'm off of that train. A loss at Auburn is bad. Getting stomped by an Oklahoma team bad. that is one of the worst offensive Worse. teams in college football is bad. Um, I actually think the lagway combo and all that stuff, losing at Florida, is, there's, there's worse losses out there. Yeah, I there don't are. have any of those teams in. I have Indiana in. Uh, and I don't and, know and you're going to wind up being right. And I, I think they're going to be in. They're yeah, going to be in. I, yeah, I'll be surprised if they're not, but I. That doesn't mean I have to agree with it. Yeah, yeah but I, I do wonder, like, I'm like, I can't, like, I think it is, like I said, I've already said it three times. It feels more like standings, or that's what people want, is they want standings. That they want to go, well, if you have three losses, this team has one loss and all these different things. But even doing that with Indiana, like, I have to respect the fact that they could win 10 games. I don't respect the fact that they got their asses handed to them. And I think we're, we're sort of hoping for uh, maybe in two weeks the score will look more respectable thing. Uh, they're not, certainly not the only team to ever do something like that. I remember, I think I was at Oklahoma Mizzou when they were losing and Stoops punted. And somebody was like, did you punt there because you wanted the score to look better? And Stoops was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I actually my- remember that game. Right, and it was like my slow, like going from not being able to stand Bob Stoops to just loving Bob Stoops for and who he is. Yeah, and I, he was like, "Yeah," he was like, "Seems like well, I forget what the answer was, but it was just an awesome, honest, like you can only answer it when you've already won a national championship that way." It was the same year he kicked me out of his office. 
yeah for yeah, uh, he, for trying to get him to to show me how that they were going to try to i think it was west virginia <laughs> how how he would defend the the west virginia triple option he's like what fuck you want you want me to give you a game plan here i'm not doing that for a game day segment what are you talking about get out of here <laughs> and then we had to like call fitting and herbie had to like intervene like we came back in and we did some like fluff piece for 15 minutes and it turned out it turned out they played West Virginia at the end of the season in the bowl game and so it would have been right it would have been a disaster <laughs> oh it's funny we ended up loving Bob I oh had yeah a tough, absolutely I had a couple tough like I'd be down in Norman and I'd have like a one-on-one with my little handheld thing with him and it was the first one got off to such a terrible start yeah i was like what's going on with your defense now like me just classic like abrasive like what the fuck are you guys doing back there you know <laughs> yeah yeah and he was like what you feel to realize i was like oh shit and then um then he yeah, had one were... where he just he just like blew us off entirely like i waited hours and hours and hours before the byu game when bradford got hurt and the, it was the first real football game in new cowboy stadium so they played a college game there before they played an nfl game oh that's so right we were there that. for that yeah because the other thing too is we had sideline passes and we still got kicked out of there it's like the only place i've ever had a sideline pass where then i was kicked out i was like what is going on i was like i just did a show outside of this fucking place for seven hours i was like i don't care Are you doing anything right now it's like taking it in bringing back perspective <laughs> to uh, a radio show that has 400 affiliates it's heard around the world there's troops listening to us uh you Fuck were you. there are troops listening to us you were abrasive <laughs> i'm not saying you're not now but i would say you were un- unjustifiably abrasive at certain points in your career is that fair yeah i'm a very not housebroken uh, well person but- and i don't mean it like i push my chair in I clean up after mm-hmm. myself. I don't I don't mean it in that way. I would say cuz there's other people I'm around where I'm like what the fuck like how did you grow up? Right. You know? I'm not that kind of I'm I'm corporate on housebroken. Yeah. I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm better now. I'm better now. Yeah, you are. But you are. Back then uh you know, look, what's the point of a warm up question? If I have seven minutes with Bob Stoops, let's get to it. How come you guys are getting lit up on the outsides? <laughs> exactly. All that's right. Why? I have Indiana 12. Uh, I guess that's the headline. You don't. I saw your rant, and we both know they'll be there Tuesday. So, yep, I agree. Big 10. All, All right. right. Sounds good. Thank you, Todd. Thank you to Todd McShay. You can check him out every single week, three times a week, and live on Saturday night for the college football schedule. Recap the McShay Show. Please subscribe on Spotify right now.